morning. Give an honor to God. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Espy. I'm running for United States Senate. I'm running as a proud Mississippian, proud husband and father and grandfather. I'm a former congressman from Mississippi. I'm a former cabinet secretary for the nation, but from Mississippi. And I've been a member of the same Baptist church for about 35 years. My wife and I have three children, a daughter who graduated from Mississippi State and went on to receive her law degree from Ole Miss. You might remember my son, Mike Espy, number 11, who's with me here today, who caught passes from Eli Manning. Mike went on to play football with the Washington Redskins. My wife and I have a youngest son, Ian, who is uh, not quite as fast as, as Mike. But Ian caught 33 on his ACT last week. And he's looking at colleges. So we're proud of all of them, just as you are about your children and your grandchildren. My wife and I want to make sure that all of our children can reach their God-given potential. And I want to help them. And I want to help you to help them to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been to the Shoba County Fair many, many times, and I've heard speakers come to this podium and tell you what they hope to do, what they want to do. Some of them spell platitudes. They're full of talk and promise, many of them. But I'm here to tell you this morning what I have done to help the people of America and Mississippi to move it forward, not just in the Congress and not just in the cabinet, but in the private sector for I've been, where I've been for the last 20 years. Conservatives come and talk about cutting waste and cutting fluff from the budgets. But I have done that when I walked into the USDA in 1993. It was too large. They had 124,000 employees. It had not been reformed or downsized since Abraham Lincoln created it in 1862. Nothing had happened. It just got larger and larger and larger, even though our farm population had gotten smaller and smaller. That's a percent of our population. I stepped in and I said very respectfully, without any rancor, I said, look, we have too many employees in this building, and some of you should go. And we offered a modest incentive package as long as they took it within 30 days. And you know what happened? Within 30 days, 7,500 employees left the employer of the USDA. We reduced the payroll. We reduced retirement outlays, and we did it without any lawsuits. And that is thinking outside of the box. What else did we do? Farmers had to go hither and yon to get the services they needed. But during my administration, we merged the agencies. We downsized the agency and we created one-stop shops. So all the farmers had to do would be to go to one place, one place to get their services from one location. So we cut the payroll. We cut the overhead. And that is not something I'm sitting here just talking about. It is something that I have done. I believe that if we're going to get the government that we want and that we need with our hard-earned tax dollars, you deserve an efficient, focused agency that does the most good for the least cost. Red tape and waste just doesn't hurt Republicans. It just doesn't hurt Democrats. It hurts all of us. Another thing I've done, as a freshman in 1987, I stepped up and I wrote an infrastructure and job training bill. Go look it up. It's called the Lower Mississippi Delta Development Act. And Ronald Reagan signed that act that I wrote into codified law. This helped build roads and bridges and jobs that we need in Mississippi and the remnants of that bill are still in force today. Here's another thing. I stepped in as a freshman and I went to the party bosses, the Democrat party bosses, and I said, look, we have an industry in Mississippi called catfish. It's a new industry. It's an emerging industry and it needs help. And I want to do something called National Catfish Day. Those guys from Michigan and Massachusetts, they laughed at me. And they made me go and get 219 signatures 
because they believed that we couldn't do it. But we did it. We got those signatures, that bill was passed, then it crossed over onto the Senate side. And I cajoled senators to pass that bill. And two weeks later, America had the National Catfish Day that we targeted to the military. So Mississippi Catfish went into all the troop dining halls and commissaries and troop dining tables in the world, raising profits and raising markets for our nascent catfish industry. Ladies and gentlemen, that is thinking outside of the box. So I'm standing before you today because our leaders in Washington, I believe, are really just failing all of us. I think too many of them have become blinded by party loyalty, and they are just really unable to see the impact of their failures. I see divisiveness. I see chaos. I see knee-jerk politics at the very worst. And when blind party loyalty fails, we got to understand it impacts all of us, Republicans and Democrats. Here is an example. I've been speaking recently about tariffs on agricultural trade. Agriculture Mississippi is a $7.6 billion industry and brings in about 1.1 in every three jobs in our state is tied to agriculture. Soybean farmers bring in about a billion dollars a year in soybean production. I believe, as you believe, that our farmers are productive. Our farmers are very competitive. Our farmers want trade, they don't want aid. But yet we've seen the harmful impact of retaliatory tariffs on our soybean farmers based on the imposition of a trade policy that our farmers did not create, and they do not want it. And our soybean prices, if you look at the tables, they're now at a 10-year low. And that's just food off the table for all of our Mississippi farmers and consumers. I believe our Mississippi manufacturers and our timber manufacturers want to compete without these unnecessary price hikes on their raw materials. So I believe in open markets. I believe in free trade and open competition. I believe our Mississippi farmers and our Mississippi manufacturers can win as long as the markets are open. And I'll bet on them every time. So here's all I'm saying to you, that I will be an independent senator for the state of Mississippi. I'll be a senator who will work with Democrats and work with Republicans to prevent these unnecessary trade wars that lead to higher prices for consumers, lower prices for farmers, and fewer jobs for Mississippians. My friends, our leaders in Washington are failing us, and we have to do better. We have to elect people now who will make up their own minds, who will look at the facts, and just will do right no matter what, who won't do what others just simply tell them to do. That's how we get division. That's how we get chaos. We need people who are supposed just to do better. So I've done this as an independent person over and over and over again, and I promise you, after November 6th, I will do it again. Our leaders need to frame responsible solutions for education, for health care, to make it more affordable. They need to think about building a Mississippi economy that doesn't force our children to choose between a good job hundreds of miles away or staying with their family right here in the state of Mississippi. I'm standing here today to tell you that we need rural broadband in our small towns because our economy depends on it. Without it, we'll, leave, we'll be left behind on the global economy Without it, our children will again have to choose between going somewhere else or staying in Mississippi. When I left government as an elected official, I did not leave public service. Please listen to this. I served for 14 years for a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization for which I am now the chairman. I kept working for a better Mississippi. On on. Three weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal looked at my nonpartisan, nonprofit organization 
and they gave us the national award for the most respected business, economic, nonprofit in America that serves its rural economic markets. The Wall Street Journal three weeks ago. I am the chairman. What do we do? We promote home ownership. We provide small business loans. We go to areas of Mississippi with, without sufficient doctors where they are medically underserved and we build clinics. We go to towns where they don't have large grocery stores where the folks have to make groceries at the service station and we build grocery stores. We open credit unions in small towns. And now listen to this. I'm so proud of this. We begin now to put credit unions inside of public schools. And I tell the students, you might just have 50 cents or a quarter or a dollar, but that's your money. You got, you got education in your brain and now money in your pocket, and use that interest to build your financial responsibility. All I'm saying to you is that together we can build a better Mississippi, but leaders must make up their minds based on the needs of people and not just doing what somebody else tells them to do. They need to focus their leadership not on the ones of high dollar donors or party bosses. We are still the richest country in the United States. And it's time for Mississippi leaders to focus their resources to build a new Mississippi that works for everyone, rural and urban, white and black, Republican and Democrat. We have to do more. We have to do better. We have to build in a united sense, no longer divided against ourselves, but working together toward ameliorating our urgent needs. We are to my children, we are to my grandchildren, and your children and your grandchildren to live in a world that's free and open and unified. That's what we just have to leave to them. So my name is Mike Espy. I'm running for the U.S. Senate because I believe it's time to rise above this divisiveness and this disunity and this chaos and go on, go on to help lead the nation. There's so much more that unites us than divides us if we just focus. We can come together and work for our state, not just to do politics, but to do good works. And if we do that, we can send Washington a message to build a better, a stronger Mississippi. I'm going to do my best to be accessible to all of you, to listen to you, and to make independent judgments, because no one can tell me what to do or what to think. Thank you. I'm Mike Espy. I want your votes, your prayers. I want to be your next United States Senator. Thank you very much.